More fallout today following the stunning mid-air collision over the Black Sea between a Russian fighter jet and a U.S. drone. The first known physical conflict between uh, contact, in fact, between U.S. and Russian forces since the war in Ukraine began. U.S. European command saying that the Su-27 Russian plane hit the MQ-9 Reaper drone's propeller, leading the U.S. to blank its collections and crash the drone. Several times before the collision, the Su-27s dumped fuel on and flew in front of the MQ-9 in a reckless and unprofessional manner. This incident demonstrates a lack of competence in addition to being unsafe and unprofessional. Summoned to the State Department, Russia's ambassador claiming the drone was heading for the Russian border. This drone can carry a few bombs. You see that what will be reaction of United States if you see such Russian drone very close, for example, to San Francisco or New York? What will be, will be reaction of United States? And joining me now, I'm so pleased to say, is the State Department spokesperson Ned Price for a few more days, uh, your final week in the role. Ned, I want to play a little bit more of what the Defense Secretary just had to say at the Pentagon today. So make no mistake, the United States will continue to fly and to operate wherever international law allows. And it is incumbent upon Russia to operate its military aircraft in a safe and professional manner. Ned, the U.S. is calling this incident reckless. I understand there is surveillance video of the incident. What does the video show? So, Andrea, this was uh, an unsafe and unprofessional incident that was also tinged with incompetence. And to your question about the video, uh, the video shows a Russian pilot careening in a, in a manner that looks almost entirely uncontrolled and essentially running into uh, the unmanned uh, U.S. aircraft, forcing the U.S. military to down it over uh, the Black Sea. Not only is this unacceptable, uh, it's also dangerous. You know, President Biden has a saying that the only thing worse than an intended conflict is an unintended intended conflict. And our concern, and the concern on the part of countries around the world, is that these types of encounters, these types of reckless maneuvers uh, on the part of the Russians have the potential to lead to something much more dangerous. They have the potential to be escalatory. They have the potential to put the United States uh, in direct contact with Russia. No one wants to see that. We certainly don't want to see that. Uh, and our message to the Russians is that this cannot continue. Russia, of course, has a completely different story, denying it, denying that they even came in contact with the drone. Why not release the video and show the world what really happened? Uh, so, Andrea, this is a decision that the Department of Defense is looking at. We always take these decisions first and foremost uh, with sources and methods in mind. We don't want to do anything, release anything to the public uh, that could hinder or impair uh, our ability to collect the type of information that uh, these craft uh, are uh, deployed uh, to do. But uh, the Department of Defense will uh, have more on this. Uh, Andrea, I think the broader point uh, is that we should always take with a very uh, large grain of salt everything we hear from uh, the Russian Federation, of course. Uh, what we heard from Ambassador Antonov was entirely nonsense. This Russia, th this uh, unmanned drone was over international waters. It was in international airspace. Uh, it was some 40 miles uh, away from Crimea. And by the way, uh, Andrea, when you hear the Russians talk about this uh, drone approaching their airspace, by the way, Crimea is Ukraine. Uh, we conduct these operations in close coordination with our Ukrainian partners. And as you heard from Secretary Austin earlier today, we will continue to fly to sail, to operate wherever international law allows. If, if the Russians are of the mindset that they're in a position to intimidate us against doing so, uh, we will prove them very wrong. Uh, of course, the United States and Ukraine say that Crimea is Ukraine, but for all intents and purposes, since 2014, Russia has controlled Crimea. Uh, Andrea, it's not something we've ever recognized. It's not something uh, much of the world has recognized or uh, will recognize. This is really at the heart of, of what is now Russia's full-scale uh, invasion of Ukraine. The idea on the part of Russia uh, that they can uh, make legitimate, make lawful uh, these annexations uh, by force on the part uh, of, of Russian forces and Russian troops on what is very much sovereign Ukrainian territory. They can't do it in Crimea. They can't do it in eastern Ukraine, uh, and the Ukrainians have demonstrated very well to them over the past uh, year that they won't be able to do it over the entire country of Ukraine. 
Now, just to pin this down, are, is the U.S. position that this was either incompetence or accidental, not an intentional clipping of our drone? Andrea, I think the best assessment right now is that it probably was unintentional. It probably was the result of profound incompetence on the part of one of these uh, Russian pilots. But at the end of the day, Andrea, uh, it's really immaterial. It doesn't really matter because what matters is what actually happened. Uh, a Russian aircraft caused us to down uh, this Russia, this uh, U.S. unmanned uh, aerial vehicle. Uh, that could uh, have created a much larger incident, if, uh, if, uh, uh, whether in this case or in other cases. Uh, it's not something we can see happen again, uh, given the escalatory potential. Now, turning to China, we now understand that there is going to be at least a conversation, the first conversation since the war started between President Xi and President Zelensky, but probably after there is this meeting uh, with Putin and, and President Xi. Uh, do we have any new information on whether China is considering sending lethal aid to Russia, as Secretary Blinken, uh, director of the CIA, Burns, have said, Burns said with great confidence, but others, including some allies, are raising questions about the intelligence on which that analysis is based. Andrea, our concern remains. Our concern has not changed. We, uh, we do believe that uh, the PRC, the People's Republic of China, hasn't taken this off the table. It's something they have uh, considered, and we've been very clear uh, about the consequences. But beyond uh, what we've said, I think you listen to world leaders around the globe, uh, and you've heard great concern expressed, whether that's from our German allies, whether that's from NATO allies, uh, whether it's from countries uh, around the world who are standing with Ukraine and standing on the the side uh, of the U.N. Charter and international law. Look, uh, the, the People's Republic of China has attempted to have it both ways. Throughout uh, Russia's brutal invasion against Ukraine, they have attempted to uh, uh, disguise themselves as being neutral in this conflict. But they've been anything but neutral. They have provided Russia uh, with important forms of support, diplomatic support, political support, economic support, and rhetorical support. You look at the way in which uh, the People's Republic of China is echoing uh, uh, the dangerous disinformation, lies, and propaganda that's coming out of Russia, and you see that messaging support almost every single day. Now, the decision on the part of China to provide lethal support would uh, take that uh, to another level. It's not something we've seen. Uh, we're continuing to watch very closely. Uh, and just as we're continuing to warn against it, importantly, countries uh, around the world are doing exactly the same. Now, this Friday is going to mark the end of your tenure as the spokesperson at the State Department. You're going to stay very much on Secretary Blinken's team, we understand. Uh, I guess I want to ask what you learned during that period, but primarily, what was your worst day and what was your best day? Uh, so, Andrea, a, a couple things. Um, look, I have had the tremendous honor uh, of standing at the podium behind me here just about every day uh, we are here in Washington, uh, D.C. It's some 200 briefings over the course of the past two plus years that I've been in this job. Uh, the podium behind me accommodates uh, one person. Only one person can fit there. But any success uh, that I've had in this role is a testament to the partnership, to the teamwork, uh, to the support that I've had from thousands thousands of public servants uh, across the department and uh, across uh, our government, from the people who uh, brief me every day before I brief you, uh, to those who are responsible for the technical elements, to those who have uh, the onerous chore of transcribing every single word uh, that is uttered by me or you or other reporters uh, in this briefing room. It's an entire enterprise, and I am so profoundly grateful uh, to all of them. But there's another element to this as well, Andrea, and uh, it is you. And, and and, and your colleagues. Uh, you are the ones who are asking me, who are asking my colleagues uh, across the government uh, the good, the incisive, the sometimes tough uh, questions that uh, serve one purpose, and that's to hold us accountable. And uh, we here, uh, my role has been to work to the benefit of an informed citizenry, which is uh, the bedrock of any democracy around the world, including our democracy uh, here at home. And you have a pivotal role to play in that, as do your colleagues. Uh, one final point on this. We're, we're here in 
the State Department press briefing room. Uh, we have had uh, a, a, an empty seat uh, here in the briefing room for the better part of a year now. Um, uh, our colleague Ben Hall from Fox News uh, was severely injured in the early days of Russia's brutal aggression against Ukraine. Two of his colleagues uh, were killed when their uh, vehicle came under fire from uh, Russian forces. Uh, of course, uh, Ben has always been in our thoughts. I, I know my successor will have an opportunity to welcome Ben back to this briefing room. But uh, the bigger point, Andrea, is that so many of your colleagues around the world, including people you and I know, put themselves in harm's way to do uh, what is uh, this uh, vitally important task, this vitally important task of holding people like me uh, accountable, asking the tough questions, uh, and making sure that people around the world uh, know what America is doing, how we're doing it, with whom we're doing it. Uh, and uh, we hope uh, the success uh, that we're, have, uh, we're having in all of those endeavors. As for best and, and worst days, uh, Andrea, you know, this is a job with, with many ups and downs. I've been lucky enough to be on this podium when we've had tremendous diplomatic victories. I'll, I'll just close by saying that uh, the secretary is in Ethiopia today, and it's uh, by dint of U.S. diplomacy working closely with our African partners that we've been able to bring peace, uh, help bring peace across northern Ethiopia, levels of peace that that country hasn't seen in several years now, saving countless lives, giving countless people in northern Ethiopia uh, food that they have not had for far too long. So those are the kinds of things that you hope for. Those are the kinds of things that you work for. And those are the kinds of things that we're going to continue to do uh, for uh, the rest of this administration. Now, $3.5 billion in aid to Ethiopia just in the last two years. Uh, Ned Price, let me just say, I've said this publicly, as have my colleagues from all the media, um, the fact that you, from the top down, from Secretary Blinken creating the access, recreated the daily briefing and access to travel in the airplane and uh, to the First Amendment uh, has meant so much. And I've been full-time at the State Department since 1994. And through Republicans and Democrats, through war and peace, there's always been access except for the previous four years. And so um, we thank you for the work that you've done. Thank you so much.